16 of the Scarborough Sanitary District. Um, start with the roll call. So, Charles Andresen? Here. Uh, Nick Rico? Here. Jason Greenleaf? Here. Rob McSorley? Present. And I'm Ben Viola. Um, next item, approval of minutes. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. Any corrections or comments? One on page four. Second to last line, main subsurface instead of subservice. Get it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Any others? All in favor of approval? Superintendent's operations report. Um, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of August is included in your packet. Our average daily flow for the month was 1.14 million gallons today. Uh, our FM quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 94% uh, uh, biochemical oxygen demand removal and 93% total suspended solids uh, for average concentrations of 16 and 21 milligrams per liter respectfully. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of August are also included in your packet. Uh, Higgins Beach Pump Station had an errant flow calculation due to equipment maintenance. The Postal Way Pump Station had one day of high flows due to a sewer break caused by construction activity at, at FW Web. Other than those irregularities, no other issues were noted. Chairman, okay. inquire on the lift uh, station flows there. Is that at the beginning of the month, the ones that are like 700,000 in a couple of days on Hickory Beach? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, it was because of maintenance? Yeah, we uh, replaced the, uh, the transducer oh. down there, and when he programmed the transducer, he plugged in the wrong value. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a question on... Okay, go ahead, Nick. Um, the state report, I, I was just curious. I, I think the, the discharge test week, I was just curious why there were four, um, three weeks in a row, just extra testing, I imagine. Yeah, we were doing some extra testing. We were having some process problems, so oh, we were just okay. doing some extra testing. Curious. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other point I was wondering about was, um, did anyone catch the irony of uh, sewer break by FW Web? <laughs> well, we must be good that. <laughs> Continue on, Dave. Um, the CMP uh, rate hike, we have noticed that the rate increase has gone into effect with our most recent electric bills. And finally, um, Carol Tucker and I presented at the Maine Water Environment Association's Fall Conference on generator selection, maintenance, and operation. Carl did a great job. He ought to be commended for it. You know, it put him in a very uncomfortable situation, but he, he did a uh, fantastic job and helped other operators out. And that is all I have right at the moment. Short. Yeah. Any questions on the report? Not seeing any. We'll move on to correspondence. If there is none, then an old business, none again. The new business amendment bylaws, Deputy Treasurer. Uh, Section 8 of the bylaws of the Scarborough Sanitary District requires a vote of the majority of the trustees at a regular or special meeting of the trustees in order to amend the bylaws. Pursuant to Section 8, um, Section 4 of the bylaws of the Scarborough Sanitary District uh, shall amend, shall be amended to add the following language prior to the final section of sentence of that section. And this is the, uh, what would be added. Quote, if any, if and when the trustees determine it necessary, the trustees may also appoint a deputy treasurer who must, who must be a trustee, who shall serve at the pleasure of the trustees, and who shall perform all the same duties and functions at, of the treasurer when the trustees make an affirmative determination that the treasurer is absent. 
I recommend a motion to amend the bylaws as noted above. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? Uh, just just a, a question about <coughs> how this is going to work in practice. Um, if the trustees um, are going to make an affirmative determination, is that a determination that has to be made at a formal meeting? That is my understanding. Okay. And so if we make the determination... Uh, and then the treasurer returns that we then have to make a follow-up action to formally remove the deputy treasurer from the treasurer's activity or will the treasurer simply his presence simply occasion that to happen I don't know I'd have to get clarification from our council on that okay uh, Typically, a deputy position, like a deputy clerk or something, performs that in absence of uh, when the, the clerk is there. Then, so I would assume it, it follows along the same lines that you know when the, the duly elected or selected person is there, then you don't need to do anything with the deputy position. I'm assuming that based upon how weather. Yeah, well, I guess I understand that, but in this case, we're not appointing a deputy treasurer to act in the in the stead of the treasurer. We have to make an affirmative determination that the treasurer is absent. So it seems like it's less automatic and more process-oriented. I'm okay with going through this, th you know, for approving this this way. I understand what we, I understand why it's necessary. Uh, I just think that we ought to clarify so we can be sure a that any actions by the treasurer and the deputy treasurer are in fact um, consistent with the understandings of the trustees and then to be sure that there's no subsequent action where some some activity by the, the treasurer or the deputy treasurer might subsequently be questioned that's that's I'm, I'm really just trying to be careful that we don't uh, incorporate something where responsibilities might be crossed or lines of responsibility might be clear to the people that are that are doing them I think this is I think this is fine at this point but I think we should follow up uh, with the uh, legal counsel to find out how we make the determination of when that when the treasurer <coughs> has returned to can I, uh, I got a question um, what would be the pleasure of the board? Would you want it to be a um, uh, formal determination at a trustees meeting, both um, uh, to begin the action and to end the, the, the authority of the deputy treasurer, or would you rather more informal? Well, I would think it'd be more informal. Otherwise, we're gonna be having to have a meeting to but I'm not sure how we go go through with this. Uh, were we plan on making the determination tonight? Yes. Yes. So it would work in this instance, but in the future. Well, I, I think I think I, I'm not trying to slow down our process here. It's it's just uh as I peruse this this afternoon again, I was thinking of the actual mechanics by which it would happen. And so um, I mean, I'm happy with the treasurer when he when the treasurer returns that we're all clear that he would automatically then reassume his duties and the deputy treasurer would not continue to function in that capacity. If that's all our understanding, I think that's great. But I would like to make sure that we follow up and just add that amount of detail at some subsequent time. I also suspect that our attorney is concerned that the deputy treasurer be specifically authorized to act in that in that capacity and so I, I I'm suspecting that that's where this language came from and so he may have he may have a 
suggestion for how we transition back to the treasurer's operation. And if, if it could just be by his physical return, I'm happy with that too. I'll, um, I'll continue this conversation with our attorney with okay. thoughts. <clears throat> Good comments, Charlie. I, I hadn't even thought about that, but uh, it would be, it's kind of complicated. Could be. Could be. Especially if there's some disagreement. <laughs> so, any other questions before we take a vote? All in favor? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint Jason Greenleaf as Deputy Treasurer. Second. Assuming that he's willing. He's willing yeah. to accept, sir. <laughs> All in favor of that motion? And so now we have to. Yeah, I was going to just say we probably should. In, in light of the conversation, the discussions that we just had, we probably should amend um, <coughs> the agenda and add that item to. Um, I move that we add another agenda item to clarify the presence or absence of the treasurer. Second. Any discussion on that? Uh, so we're suspending the rules and adding an item to the agenda? That's what we're doing. I'm sorry. I and, we're gonna, uh, and by doing this, then we're going to rule that the treasurer is currently absent. Correct. Yes. We have a motion on the second, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. All in favor? So do we need another motion? Now we need another motion. So moved. The motion is? To, uh, make an affirmation. to make an affirmation that the treasurer is now absent. Any second on that? Second. 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 Jason. <clears throat> and I assume there's no discussion on that. Does anyone have any discussion? Not seeing any. All in favor? Okay. Congratulations, Stacey. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, it might it just be in order to explain to folks who are viewing that the treasurer okay. is currently incapacitated, and this is a temporary. Uh, this is a measure to provide for a trustee to provide that function uh, while he's dealing with his incapacitation. Uh, so the current treasurer, David Nelson, is uh, incapacitated or absent. So we've had to uh, elect him. The deputy treasurer to act until the treasurer comes back at a future date. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, item C, Willowdale Commons. Uh, Willowdale Commons, which is at 11 Willowdale Road. Uh, BH2M is requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from the proposed Willowdale Commons consisting of four single family dwelling units within two buildings located at 11 Willowdale Road. The, the development will be serviced by a private sewer system that would tie into the district's uh, system within Willowdale Road. Uh, the lot currently supports an existing building which is already tied into the sewer system. This building will remain as is. The proposed sewer consists of approximately 190 linear feet of 8-inch gravity sewer and three manholes. The sewer manholes and sewer laterals all are all private with the exception of the one manhole within Willowdale Road. I recommend the approval with the following conditions. Uh, this lot was part of the original sewer service area with a wastewater allocation of one residential dwelling unit. The existing building was subsequent, subsequently connected to the sewer. Consequently, all four proposed units are subject to the capacity reserve fee. 
this capacity reserve fee is based on a single family residential dwelling units without accessory units. Any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approval and capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per home is $3,024.46 and is adjusted monthly based on the engineering news records con construction cost index. Based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee due for the four dwelling units is $12,097.84. Capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer, uh, sewer extension permit. Um, all sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape placed um, and tracer wire. Uh, a sewer extension permit is required. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. A sewer permit is required for each unit. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no site work shall be completed. And then professionally surveyed electronic geo reference CAD drawings, so stamped PDF of CAD drawings, stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. I had a question on that. Oh, so okay. moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. So I had a question on the condo. So condo units are not considered to be uh, commercial. They're like single family residents. Correct. So the fee per their quarterly fee is? The, the quarterly fee will be $99 for each unit. Okay. So in this case here, there will be five units, so $500 less five. Five units, including the existing one, which yeah. which is already on the floor. Mm -hmm. okay. Shall we? Yeah, um, is, the, uh, is the existing residence going to be part of the condominium proposal, or is that going to be a separate, a separate it, parcel? It, it's uh, part of the uh, project. So it's basically going to be a five-unit condominium project. Then. Okay. Rob? Is the existing building no longer going to be used for commercial use? Um, right now it is being used for commercial use, but my understanding is that eventually it's going to be converted to yeah. residential. Yeah. Yeah. So it will be built based on a residential unit. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the project before. Well, it, I guess it's, it doesn't need to have a monitoring mid hall at all because it's all residential. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, I got. Yeah, okay. uh, one other question. Um, again, remind me how these restrictions uh, on the capacity reserve fee are going to be conveyed to the owner? An approval letter will be sent to the owner uh, on. At the bottom of the approval letter, there's a signature space for acceptance of the conditions that are of approval, okay. and that is returned to me prior to issuance of the sewer permit. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all in favor of the motion? Okay. Let's do the budget summary. Uh, the eighth month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that budget summary? Scott? A question. Um, on uh, on uh, the salaries and wages, um, we're up 10000 this month over the budgeted monthly amount is that because of the part-time or the the part-time help that we've hired to uh, deal with the uh, capacity reserve fee it's some of that and I also believe we had a five month week five week five, oh. five week month I'm I see. Sorry. okay great and then the the uh, on the chemicals we're, we're up the uh, seventeen thousand dollars for the month is that a one-time purchase of something or yes. Yeah, so I had thank you. Any other questions or comments? 
So, all in favor? Budget? Did we take a vote? Yeah, we did take a motion. <coughs> then we move on to public comments. No public uh, trustee comments. Start with Jason. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers go out to the Nelson family. Ditto on the Nelson family, thoughts and prayers, um, and kudos to Carl for his presentation at Muria. Carl? Um, yeah, I guess I would echo our concern for Dave and his family at this difficult time, and appreciate his efforts on behalf of half the district over all these many years that he served as a trustee and as a treasurer. Um, and again, uh, continue to appreciate staff's efforts to uh, stretch their limits and boundaries. I'm sure Carl, uh, I'm sure Carl did a great job, and I'm sure it wasn't without some anxiety and trepidation um, moving forward. But I think it just reflects well on the district to have these. Uh, um, Occasions when our staff is is out making presentations uh, to other organizations, um, so I appreciate that and the continued uh, positive reinforcement that the superintendent has given to the staff. So thank you, Dave. That's it. Uh, I want to thank and congratulate Carl on uh, his presentation efforts and uh, representing the district well. And uh, my thoughts and prayers are with David and his family. Yeah, it's always uh, always proud of the staff and different things that they do, whether it's presentations or some other work that's being done. They really professional uh, staff that we have, and uh, Dave Nelson <coughs> he's, he hasn't missed many meetings over the years, and uh, our thoughts are with him and have been with him, and uh, hope hope uh, hope the family as well. Um, with that. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? 